This building, it's we're in downtown. We're a livable building. It's it's a uh, it's right in the in the heart of uh, Los Altos. So obviously, the strategy is to be able to to uh, to meet the demand of our employees and also visitors. That it could reflect the mission and the programs of the foundation. So we make grants around the world to organizations that are working on marine conservation and on energy conservation and on land conservation. And this building showing that you can have a beautiful place to work that has net zero energy, means that it produces as much energy as it consumes on an annual basis, is an important demonstration of that mission. Thanks to David and Lucille Packard who founded this organization, currently uh, our endowment consists of $7 billion of investment assets. Uh, we're obliged as a private foundation to spend at least 5% of that every year in funding uh, grantees and, and charitable efforts around the world. With that $7 billion asset base allows us to fund over $300 million a year in grants to non-profit charities of various sorts. Uh, most folks who walk by who have no knowledge about the net zero energy features of this building would probably not distinguish this building from any other building you see in Los Altos. This is a building that fits in with the history of this community, that it feels like it's part of a small community. The people walk by and it fits in with the buildings around it. And the people can see in the windows and they can see that there are regular folks working inside the building on a day-to-day -day basis. The idea of a net zero energy building and being able to see it in the community and to have people be able to visit inside this building is something that I think is really important because it shows people that you can not only achieve an environmental goal, but it can be a beautiful place to look at, it can be a great place to work so that you can accomplish what you want to professionally. And hopefully that inspires other people to do small things inside their own buildings or even try to do something big like build a similar kind of building. With this building at 50,000 square feet, we have the largest certified net zero energy building uh, as it stands today. Hopefully we'll get knocked off that pedestal soon and someone will build a larger building that is also net zero energy certified. Well, especially now, pretty much everything in the building gets electrified in some way. Even, you know, windows now are starting to get electrical connections. So in terms of functionality, um, the electrical system is kind of like the central nervous system of, of a building. Um, you know, we touch everything from the architectural systems, the mechanical systems, the plumbing systems, um, even the landscape designer, you know, all their irrigation valves need power, so uh, we provide that. So in order to achieve net zero energy certification, the first year of our operation, we generated uh, an excess of 66 megawatt hours over the course of a year, which we exported back to the grid for PG&E's use. Um, in the second year of our operation, we did even better, exporting about 81 megawatt hours of electricity back to the grid. And in large measure, thanks to the efforts of our building engineer, we'd be able to refine the performance of this building even further so that this, which is our third year of operation, we're on track to exceed the performance of even our first two years. So even before they started putting pen to paper, they, they wanted to understand how everyone's systems interacted and how the architecture can respond to suit um, all, the, all the different systems that go into the building. And Packard Foundation is actually net positive, which not a lot of buildings can claim. Um, they are producing more energy than they use on a yearly basis. This endeavor that the foundation has taken on, it's obviously a very expensive one, but we were trying to say, okay, we're gonna do this and we're gonna try to make it replicable so um, we can kind of demonstrate or maybe be the baseline for other organizations that may go into trying to do this. I do see Los Altos progressing towards greener buildings. I think all communities are gonna to progress toward greener buildings. We have to. Climate change is the most important global threat that we have, not only in the environment, but to everything else we care about. It impacts children because of asthma rates in places like the Central Valley. It impacts development in places around the world where people are trying to eke out a standard of living. So we have to make changes in order to be able to address climate change. And the good news is with a building like this that you can address climate change and you can also save money. You can spend less money on energy and you can have a beautiful place to work.
I know that folks around in Los Altos may have the kids that are in high, high schools uh, around this area probably have a lot more opportunity to, to get into this kind of technology or to be to understand what's going on. But I, w I would like to take it to the barrios, you know, <laughs> be able to impact uh, some of those kids. Mm -hmm.